Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat and I'm a knitter and uh, fibre lover from Hertfordshire and this is my little space where I've documented my knitting journey from Project 1 through to now where we've got quite a cool community of other people inspired by making with fibre or just enjoying being here which is kind of cool. Um, today I wanted to just talk about uh, my spinning wheel and my adventure so far. I figured it would be nice to just sit down and just show the footage of me spinning whilst I did a kind of voiceover this time just because I don't know I am still as you might be able to hear I'm still not feeling a hundred percent and you know I thought it might actually be quite relaxing to the eyes to see me spinning though in hindsight for more advanced spinners it might be a bit traumatic so Bear with me. Um, yeah, the wheel itself came to me through a series of rather serendipitous events. Um, a lovely maker named Magda of Magda Knit sent me an Instagram message letting me know that the Bucks Guild of Spinners, Weavers and Dyers were selling off some unused equipment and on the listing was a spinning wheel. And I had a little look, I've been looking for quite some time but it just kind of felt right so I sent uh, them a message and it happened to be available still and with a lot of gratitude I was able to purchase it with the support of other makers and just people that view via Ko-Fi. Um, I can't believe and thank you so much to those who helped me make this little fleece to garment dream become kind of closer to my grasp. I had organised to collect it the next day and it was a little bit of a mooch from where we live, but, you know, I think an hour. So it had been a two hour round trip and it was definitely a drive that I was willing to take. But it transpired that my lovely best friend Becky was going to come over for tea and she actually lives in that direction. And whilst I was on the phone, I just, you know, in a passing comment mentioned that I was going to be there um, in the area. Or maybe she wanted to get a lift, but... In fact, she had to pop to the actual town that it was being held, so she went and collected it for me. So not only did, you know, the timing perfectly work out, it meant that I didn't have to do a loop and Becky kind of passed her on the way and it was quite cool to see Becky just turn up at the door with my spinning wheel, but me and the spinning wheel became quite good friends. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the wheel itself. There isn't too much information available on the company or the wheels, but I have managed to find a little bit of information that kind of warmed my heart a little bit. So what I can ascertain is that the like overriding umbrella company was called Tenko Tenko, and then within that there was Pippi Craft Limited, and they were based in Auckland, New Zealand, and it looks like they have kind of stopped um, making and being a company but Pippi was the brand that the wheels themselves were given and my wheel is called a Polly I believe there's a Wendy and a few others but my Polly was designed by a man called Philip Poor for the studio to spin fancy, unusual and bulky yarns beyond the capability of an ordinary wheel. Um, and that definitely seems to be why it has such a lovely big bobbin and I love the sliding hook and it doesn't have an orifice. Anyway, the website that I found that had the most information was called nzspinningwheelsinfo.wordpress.com I'll put that link below, I know that sometimes I talk a bit funny. Um, but in their article they wrote that they'd found a Pippi Craft advertisement in Fiberfax magazine in 1981 and it described the wheel as a weaver's wheel, which if you know my surname's Weaver and it just felt right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of fun, but also I guess it means that you've Got a lot of creativity and flexibility for creating yarn for weaving. Uh, the one that's sampled on the website had MC62 Chisholm stated on the bottom and that meant 
that it was made by Ray Chisholm, who took over the company in sometime in 1982. But mine actually says MC8205 P.B.Poor. And this is quite awesome because it means that it was made in May 1982 by Philip Poor himself. So that's pretty awesome if you ask me. The wheel itself has four speeds at ratios of 1 to 3 up to 1 to 7. The large pulley is for low twist thick wool and the small one for high twist fine yarns. I'm still leaving this one how I received it for the time being and will maybe change it when I feel a bit more confident in, you know. I did also find a really good pippy spinning instructions sheet and it doesn't just have information on preparing wool for spinning and spinning on a double driving band wheel but it also has some really good hints for knitting handspun wool. There's a written acknowledgement for Bess Darcy Smith, who has written a full book published in 1984 called Fleece in the Shed and Knitting of Handspun, but I can't quite find a copy of it, but given how good and clear the information on the sheet is, I'd be quite interested to read it. I will link a a link below to that sheet if you're interested. I do think it's quite good, especially if you're a newer spinner like myself. So whilst I'm super new to this and I haven't got loads to say because my understanding is still really new, I did want to share a few of the things that I've spun on this wheel so far. She definitely needs a name and I think it needs to be a little bit long and maybe ridiculous, a bit larger than life maybe? like she is, maybe Holly Jolly or Falker is always a good name for me, you know, Falker like in um, The Neverending Story. Anyway, I'm more than happy to have ideas <laughs> if you have any. So I've already shared this, so I'll scan over fairly quickly, but the wheel came with neon pink merino fibre, which is really nice, but it's safe to say it didn't bring me that much joy, and I did try it, and I did spend time with it, but I did have to give up fairly quickly. My eyes just wanted something that brought me a little bit more joy and my hands loved when I changed over to the organic British white wool that Bee gifted me and it really made a big difference to my enjoyment. Not only the little bit of tooth and a more soothing colour to my mind but the slightly short, shorter staple length really made it a little bit more of a chef's kiss, let's say. Next, I spun a wee bit of Black Welsh Mountain from Adelaide Walker, which happened to be another gift from a lovely, lovely maker. Um, I have a few more of those Adelaide Walker ones too. The Welsh Mountain sheep are, well, from the Welsh Mountains and usually raised in the south of Wales. The sheep were usually bred for meat and it sounds like previously there wasn't any focus particularly on the fiber but in the last century or so there has been focus given to the breed with quantity and the quality of fiber improving the micron count for the finest can be 30 microns and on the rougher end of the scale about 38 to 40 and for me it seems really like it's going to be fairly durable and i really love how it feels spun into this two ply. It's a little bit lofty, I spun it not too tight but a little bit tighter than previously and I found it really easy to draft and I do think that's partially to do with it being commercially carded. Okay so this next one is something that definitely I want to work on but that's kind of like everything. This was yet another gift, this was from lovely Anna of Spinspired who happens to be kind of a family friend. Uh, she's been knitting with my auntie for years and now happens to work alongside my cousin in a very small town so or village really so that's kind of cool but anyway I met with her at the Southern Wool Show and I think this is merino and alpaca and I just happened to say that I love the colour and she thrust it at me and wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, I found again this was really easy to draft. It was obviously a lot less toothy than the previous two and 
the staple lengths quite long, but I did really enjoy it. And can we just say how awesome it is that these bobbins are so big? So I ended up doing it all onto one bobbin and wanted to try chain plying and it became a little bit more natural after a while, as in kind of towards the end of finishing the whole bobbin, but I'm happy with it. I think it looks, you know, questionable, but I understand the movement now and I'm getting the, it was more succinct, the treadling with the, the chain movement by the end. So I also don't think that it helped that I insisted on watching Taskmaster while I was doing it. So I was having a wee giggle. But nevertheless, the colour is absolutely gorgeous, and I think it will work for something. Uh, chain plying does seem handy because you won't waste any of the fibre in the plying process, though so far, touch wood, I've been quite lucky and haven't had much or even any left in the plying process so far. The final skein that I want to share is one that I am so, so happy with. I really think I am starting to get used to the wheel and how I want to spin, in particular when I am doing a two-ply yarn. I think that I would like to see if I can get a couple of bobbins made. It sounds like Philip Paul's son does still make bobbins, but I'm, I'm not sure if not. I might have to ask my dad if he might make me some for maybe my birthday next year. Um, anyway. This was the first fibre I purchased, aside from the fibre that came with the spindle that I started with, and I got it on a trip to Scotland just before we got married. Whilst we were there, we stumbled upon Strathern Fleece and Fibre, and I actually asked Linda if I could come and do a little interview with her, and if you are ever in the Creeth or Perthshire area, I 10 out of 10 would recommend a little trip to Linda's Fibre Hut. I can't quite remember, I believe that this is either blue texel or BFL because it does have luster and I don't think blue texel should really have a luster. I might have to contact Linda and see what she thinks. But I did a, another two ply and I wanted to give it a bit less twist than I had for the Welsh Mountain to let it be a little bit more lofty and I really love how it came out, I think it was just about right. I haven't checked the wraps per inch yet, but I got 304 meters for 110 grams, and I did wash it, and the 304 meters was before I washed it, so I haven't re-skeined re it yet, but I might do that if I am going to knit with it, and there's a risk that I might have to play yarn chicken. So I guess a little bit about what I hope to do going forward. And really that is just a lot more practicing and playing and I know I have so much to learn and that always gets me quite excited. I really want to look at drafting methods, different ways of applying. I will hopefully level up from my cardboard self-made kind of lazy cake that is made using two metal straws two cardboard boxes and a little bit of like masking tape. Uh, it's been working, sometimes it's janky and sometimes it goes quite smoothly. So that's something to do a bit more uh, improving on. And I do want to continue pondering what my first fleece to garment item might be and I hope to continue playing with more breeds and hopefully doing a bit more of a deep dive and more in-depth research on them as I spin them. I think starting off I just wanted to get a feel for it and see what, you know, what was most enjoyable and I do have to admit that just doing a little quick look at the breed before I spin does make me feel that much more connected to the fibre. So I'm hoping a bit more of a deeper dive will be something that will be part of my future. And I think you can spot here I'm spinning on a new fibre that is really gorgeous and I can't believe arrived through my letterbox. Um, thank you Mary Louise. Uh, it was a surprise and I can't believe how gorgeous Fellview Fibre's carding is. It's ridiculous. Um, 
but I'll talk more about this next time. I do also hope that I can have a little play with hand carding. I have some of fleece from the wool shreds, south down fleece, and I'm not sure if it's been cut too short, so the staple length will be too short for me to spin and card, but that's something that I'd like to play with, and hopefully something that I can do in the near future. And if not, I will perhaps do some uh, felting with it. I have a, a festive project under my belt at the moment that I'm working on. It will only take half an hour or so, I reckon, to complete, so that will that will hopefully be shared this week too. So yeah, I should probably stop waffling and get learning. I hope that this was enjoyable for you. I hope that whatever you are up to this week, that you are finding some joy somewhere. I hope that you do have some nicer weather. I'm looking out of my window right now to a very gloomy day. It is raining, not heavy enough that you can hear it, which is probably a blessing. But yeah, please take care of your loved ones. Please look after yourself. Do something that makes you smile and don't forget to love each other. I hope to see you again soon.